Although not physically made by hand or meticulously crafted from real material, a video game character's costume has the potential to elevate them to iconic status. Unlike characters in film and TV, most video game characters have just the one outfit. A good look adds personality, it enhances physicality and, if designed thoughtfully, can add some much needed believable functionality within the gaming world. <laughs> Link, the hero of Hyrule. Link wears his memorable green tunic, white leggings, a long Phrygian cap, and hefts an imposing Hylian shield and a shiny master sword. It's the get-up of a hero of legend and prophecy, and it's one that's changed very little over the years. A perfect example of how repetition can cement a character's identity. The long cap gives Link an impish quality, and the overall green colouring perfectly illustrates Link's relationship with nature, especially since Miyamoto was inspired to create Legend of Zelda after a formative childhood experience lost in a forest. One of the great things about Link's classic fantasy costume is its unisex nature. Cosplayers around the world, both male and female, can wear the simple costume with respective pride. One of the key concepts that character designers have borrowed from fashion design is the silhouette. Our eyes comprehend silhouettes much faster than the fine detail that goes into a particular look. There's a lot of cultural shorthand going on in the creation of silhouettes, and the same is true of game character creation. Ezio Auditore da Firenze. The distinctive hawk's head hood design of Ezio and his brotherhood of merry assassins cast an immediately clear silhouette. The multi-layered costume emphasises the smoothness of his takedowns, while the always up hood applies a mysterious aura. His costume functions to maintain anonymity, while at the same time exhibiting an almost regal importance. Ubisoft has struggled a bit to maintain this assassin's look across the different iterations of the franchise. The trait of the always up hood and cloak gets repeated across a multitude of time periods, but they're always sure to add detail which call to the history of the setting. For example, the symbols of the city of Venice and the Medici family on Ezio's capes in Assassin's Creed II. Lara Croft. In the 1990s, Lara went raiding tombs in a skin-tight green singlet and a ridiculously tight pair of bottom-hugging shorts. Her tightly braided hair whipped behind her like a tail. Fingerless gloves and brown combat boots topped off what would become an iconic look. But aside from the double holsters and the rucksack, Lara's outfit was more figure-hugging than fitting. Lara's creator, Toby Gard, said he was inspired by the tomboyish comic character Tank Girl and pop singer Nina Cherry going through five designs in the process. But Lara's look was contradictory. On one hand, it was bound to the idea of feminine individualism and self-reliance, but on the other, it was highly sexualized for male consumption. The first shots of Lara before the new Tomb Raider reboot's release had many speculating it would be more of the same, as we caught glimpses of her tattered pants and dirt-covered singlet. Fortunately, we were misled, as the new Lara sported a far more practical set of clothes that reflected her dire situation. Long, tough cargo pants, a more believable bust size kept under layers, the designers actually brought real clothes, hired models, and did eye-tracking surveys to perfect the look. Her tattered layers no longer highlighted her sex appeal, but signposted her trials in the face of adversity. <sighs> Many game designers think of clothing as character development shorthand, as a way of describing a character without actually using the narrative. Bayonetta. This sexy secretary meets weird witch is the clothes horse for fetish wear in games. As a witch, Bayonetta was purposely clad in black, although this catsuit is actually made from her mystical hair, hair that leaves her naked in moments of high magic. The pointy beehive hairdo was in lieu of a pointy witch's hat, and those large black-rimmed glasses were to give her an air of intelligence, even if they look like an afterthought. Essentially, Bayonetta is the creation of game designer Hideki Kamiya, who wanted to build his perfect woman, or so he says. He got one of the team's female artists to sketch her design in the hope of attaining a more feminine approach to the character's sense of style. The result is a sort of absurd sexuality, but in a deliberate projection of a vengeful anti-heroine, a black widow whose alluring wiles will lead to your humiliating demise. 
With the development of first-person games, it became less important to clothe your main character because you rarely saw what they looked like. Instead, NPCs and enemies had to take on some of that aesthetic responsibility. Elizabeth from the recent Bioshock Infinite spins the idea of an iconic player character to a memorable companion who represents so much more to us than just a damsel in distress. The setting throughout is surreal and Elizabeth's famous blue and white gown is just that little bit Alice in Wonderland, suggestively reminding the player of the madness of their situation. Lead designer Ken Levine said Elizabeth's costume was modelled upon comic book superhero outfits using a simple two-tone colour scheme that would make her easy to identify against the elaborate environments. Elizabeth's initial look is more modest and innocent, almost princess-like with long flowing hair and a loose blouse. Miss Elizabeth. Hello. This is wonderful. It's once she's exposed to the realities of Columbia that she cuts her hair harshly short, adopting more angular lines, the stiff collar and restrictive corset echoing her role as a trapped bird in a cage. And that neck pendant is an accessory that means more to you, the player, than it does to Elizabeth. Its purpose is to create a small, personalised moment that bonds you with Elizabeth just that little bit more. Promise me that if it comes to it, you will not let him take me back. Most of the looks associated with some of our favourite characters take their inspiration from what is just necessary to function within that gaming world. Therefore, their look is more utilitarian. Commander Shepard, the hard military commander from out of space, is clad in player-customizable segmented armour that is otherwise rather understated. That tiny stroke of red next to the N7 logo reportedly symbolises the blood that would be shed in the course of saving the galaxy. The use of red and white also appears on the shoulder pieces. In fact, originally the entire costume was designed to be red and white, but Bioware decided it made Shepard look a bit too much like a medic, so they paired it back. Solid Snake from the Metal Gear series is a perfect example of how a simple accessory can create an iconic character. That furrowed brow wrapped in a wide blue headband, holding back his untamed mullet, it's classic Snake. In the very first Metal Gear on NES, Snake was actually designed to resemble Michael Bean as Kyle Reese in The Terminator. It wasn't until Metal Gear Solid on PS1 that his look was really honed down to the navy blue bandana and sneaking suit, giving him an action figure simplicity. According to character designer Yoji Shinkawa, Snake's physique in Metal Gear Solid was based on that of action star Jean-Claude Van Damme, while Hideo Kojima was getting inspiration from Snake from films like Escape from New York, which explains why Big Boss and Old Snake have the eye patch of Kurt Russell's Snake Plissken. The evolving image of a similar but different Snake attunes the audience to appreciate the subtle differences which become so important in Kojima's universe. The evolution of game character costumes needn't necessarily progress towards more believably wearable or even acceptably tasteful fashion. Sometimes all you need is a fez. But a great look will forever be integral to the everlasting iconography of some of our favourite video game heroes.